For nearly four months, Israel has conducted a violent assault on Gaza. But there has also been growing violence in the West Bank, with frequent raids on towns, hospitals and civilians. According to the UN, over 360 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli forces or settlers in the West Bank since the 7th of October. And last night, Israel's aggression in the territory reached new heights. In the Ibn Sina hospital in Jenin, IDF soldiers disguised as medical staff and civilians made their way through a hospital corridor brandishing automatic weapons. As some of the soldiers moved out of view, one man was forced to his knees where an item of clothing was taken from him and placed over his head. More soldiers moved through to other parts of the hospital, one carrying a wheelchair and another with a baby carrier in her hand or his hand. Those soldiers went on to execute free Palestinians in the hospital. Footage of the aftermath of those killings shows bloodstained floors, walls and bedding. Al Jazeera journalist Rory Challens reported that, quote, it does not know It does not look like there was any attempt to arrest these men. They were killed as they were sleeping. Hamas has confirmed that one of the men executed in the raid was a member of the group. The IDF says he was planning an imminent assault, quote, inspired by the October 7th attack. But the head of surgery at the hospital told NPR that the man was a patient, paralyzed and in a wheelchair. Of course, the hospital was also full of other patients and civilian visitors. The head of surgery also said this. They raided one of the floors in the hospital and attacked the hospital staff. They raided one of the patient's rooms and killed him and the people who were in the room with him, his brother and friend. He's also reported as saying this. What happened is a precedent. There was never an assassination inside a hospital. There were arrests and assaults, but not an assassination. Islamic Jihad has said that the other two men assassinated were their members Hamas has called the killings, quote, a vile crime that will not go without response. It added, quote, the resistance forces who have sworn to fight the occupation until it is expelled are not afraid of the assassination policy. So Hamas says they aren't afraid of Israel's assassination policy, and some Western observers aren't impressed by it. This was Sky's military analyst, Michael Clark. So it was an assassination. Now, um, in terms of the the legality of this, um, after 7th of October, there is a legal justification for that, whether you believe it or not, but they they can claim that this is legal. They've been going after Hamas wherever they find them because of what they are and what they do. Um, But doing it in that way is very suspect and is tactically foolish because it makes Israel look like Hamas. It makes it look as if they're they're doing Hamas's job. What they should do, and this is the council of perfection, is that they should go in as uniformed police uh, or uniformed troops, surround it, try to arrest the people they're after, and if they resist, then you shoot them. That's what you're supposed to do. Of course, it's very hard to do. But taking on this sort of assassination by playing at being hospital um, uh, employees is not a clever idea tactically because it just strengthens everything that people say about the IDF and what they're doing in Gaza. It strengthens that sense that they're behaving a bit like the terrorists themselves. The IDF are behaving a bit like terrorists themselves. Right? We've been saying that for months, of course, but you don't expect to see that frankness from the mainstream media. Clark's claim about the legality of the assassination is at least questionable, though. Killing wounded fighters or those receiving medical attention is a violation of Article 12 of the Geneva Convention, of which Israel is a signatory. Perfidy is also a war crime. So I only learned this today. It's defined in the Geneva Conventions and means tricking an adversary into believing you have civilian protection before betraying that confidence. Now, dressing up as a doctor to kill an enemy definitely fits that definition. Now, it seems like the characteristic example, really, of that perfidy. You dress up as a doctor or a nurse, go into a hospital, then unleash um, your weapons, your guns, and and take a, a few patients out. Now, whether or not they were members of a militant organization. That, to me, um, doesn't seem like it conforms to the rules of war. Look out for that next time. Israel's in The Hague.